Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another exciting episode of In the Shoot. I'm Brandon Carpenter, and this is Kaylin Carpenter, with me but not with me, <laughs> in beautiful Fort Knox. So, <laughs> Kaylin, what have you got for us on uh, today's episode? So, if anybody's looking, I'm looking at my notes, which I have tiny, tiny handwriting. Sorry, you can't see it. Um, how do we prep for fall sales? We always, in the October time frame, we typically sell our calves. Uh, we will have some videos up and whatnot, but how do we normally prep for the sale of the cows There's or the cattle? The Typically, it's only calves, but sometimes there are cows that go with them. What are some of those steps prior to other than just taking them and going? Like what we have to do vaccinations, we have to move them. Like what's the whole process? Where does it really start? And then how does it end up at the auction yard? Well, really the prep starts when that cow is pregnant. Seriously. I mean, yeah. you, you, people don't think about that. They're thinking about, oh, what's the last thing you do or just, you know, getting ready to take them to town. But it starts when that cow, when she preg tests positive, okay, you need to take care of that cow. Because if she's healthy, she'll have a healthy calf. And so it's the same old thing. It's, it's decent feed, mineral, giving her vaccinations, um, deworming. And then as it uh, warms up in the spring, after she's had that calf, uh, banding the calf, if it's a, a little bull calf, which basically is the way we castrate now, and then uh, making sure the cow, again, is healthy because she's milking, she's taking care of that calf. you got to take care of that, that source. And then uh, we brand, give them the, their first sets of vaccinations. And then uh, as we go along, I like to give them a wormer just prior, the cow's a wormer, a topical, just prior to them calving so that they've got the calf passes on some of that uh, uh, worming or deworming to through that cow. And uh, it's safe to do that. It's a real safe product to use ivermectin. Where you heard that before. <laughs> but anyway, um, then, you know, once that calf has been branded and we go to summer pasture, it's about keeping them calm, quiet, and at home, you know, good fences, uh, it's all about the management of the entire herd at that point. You know, you're, then you're going to spill your bulls in sometime first. We like to do it first part of June, first week in June. So we have a little bit later calf. We start to calve around the 15th of March, uh, after the really severe cold weather. Um, so making sure that they have got all the feed they need, you know, green grass, good water. Water is so important, uh, and it's and I love the, the pastures we have because everything is spring fed. We've got fresh water running filtered through sandstone rock. And that is, I mean, this water is good. I I get down out of those springs and drink it myself right out of the open. It's not a big deal. Um, so keeping them healthy that way, and you're continually watching them. A big issue we have in the summertime are, you know, vectors or flies. And so we, with our mineral, good mineral and salt, and then we give them free choice of salt blocks with cobalt, sulfur, trace mineral, along with our regular mineral that's mixed with salt. And the salt really just kind of slows them up on their intake so they don't overeat the, the, uh, the mineral, but kind of dose it a little bit and their, and their needs change based on the grass and the, uh, what kind of grass they're on. Uh, we have a different type of mineral for grass that's growing fast and, uh, Lots of chlorophylls, lots of sugars in that grass that's continuing to grow. We give them a certain uh, type of mineral. And we also, in that mineral, give them a uh, product that's mixed in it for fly control. So flies, heel flies, horn flies, I mean, they can just, they suck the blood literally right out of them. So you try to minimize that through their mineral. Uh, what it does is it's this product lyses or cuts the uh, wall, cell wall of a worm in, in the, uh, it goes through their system, you know, they lay the eggs and goes through their system. They poop it out. Flies land in this, in this stuff. And that's where they, uh, lay their eggs. And then through that in, uh, the, uh, IG called IGR to, I forget the name, but it cuts the cell wall of the larva so that the fly never emerges. And, uh, then on top of that, we will, and you'll never get them all. We also put up, uh, back rubs, so that they can rub up and, and uh, 
dose themselves really by walking underneath of a long tube of really it's filled with <laughs> rags uh to be honest with you real thick stuffed rags and you uh pour uh permethrin uh in that and they just they can't get enough to hurt themselves but it doses them and keeps the flies off to the best of your ability and uh so with that let them graze let them get fat and then uh you, know, you got this long period of time where you just make sure you keep the flies down as much as you can you keep the mineral in front of them make sure there's fresh water and the grass is good and then uh when it's uh, time to think about taking them to either a uh, buyer or you take them to town to uh, the auction yards, then a period of time between two to six weeks ahead of that is what most want. Then you go ahead and give them their second rounds of your vaccination and a uh, wormer and uh, uh, you know fly control again as a topical, and then. Uh, you know, wait for sale day or, or the day you're going to ship. And then, then they go on to somebody else. So they're all prepped and ready to go, uh, with that, you know, second booster, but it's, it's really about your herd management. And, you know, there's nothing worse than running out there with, I think with a, a four wheeler or a motorcycle and people do that with light, light used to, especially, you know, small motorcycles who give up their horses and they're, checking these cows and running them and you know if they're not used to it you can sure spook a herd and they don't respect those those, those bikes or or four-wheelers or used to be three-wheelers for god's sakes those things were death traps way back in the 70s 80s but um riding through those cattle checking them checking your bulls you know because your bulls are going to go in there and uh, you're also managing them and watching them making sure everybody's good they're calm they're happy and uh if something is not stressed, the animal's not stressed, they're going to gain weight and they're going to be healthier. They're going to be happier. And, you know, that's what it's all about. Getting pounds on them, getting that weight up there as much as you can uh, so that they look good. They are healthy and you've got, you know, uh, more money per pound that you're, you're getting paid for. Cause it's, that's the end of the line. It's, it's uh, you know, we're not the terminal end uh, that goes to somebody else, a stalker or, or uh, feeder, you know, selling these to somebody else going to put them on grass for a while and then take them into a feedlot generally. But it's uh, about keeping them healthy and happy. And that starts with that happy cow before she ever calves. Well, yeah, I think that's, that's probably the best point that you have throughout that whole process is especially when it comes to like the flies, people don't think about, Oh, the flies aren't really that, in, they don't impact it that much. Oh, but they do. <laughs> and, and yeah. trying to keep the cow itself as healthy as possible and as robust as possible then in turn assists in keeping that calf healthy and big and growing as much as possible so that you can get that that big calf that you're looking for at the end of the day well and you think about the flies and i've read a number of things about uh how much a horn flies on say and and of course it depends on the size of the animal you know the mm -hmm. larger the animal a big bull you know you're looking 2,000, 2,300 pounds. That's a, that's a big animal and a big bull, uh, with, and you normally see a lot more flies, especially those horn flies on those big bulls like that. I mean, they're just sometimes be covered with them. It's like, and I don't know whether it's their uh, bulls smell different than cattle. I mean, whether it's an odor thing or what, I don't, I don't know, yeah. honestly, but you'll see a lot of these, these flies on them and they can, they can extract as much as 150 cc's of blood a day that's a tremendous amount of blood. You know, right. I mean, that's 150 cc's is a lot. So that's a maximum up to that. You know, that's some of the, the most I've heard, but you know, it takes energy to re replenish that blood and you're taking that out a lot. These, these flies are, they're having a heyday. They're feasting. And right. so that's a lot of flies. That's on a big animal, but every, every little bit of blood that's taken out of something that's stopping their production. And, and weight production. They're putting that into being able to sustain their bodies. So uh, flies are a huge, huge thing. And worms, I mean, any kind of vector like that is really tough. And, and I didn't, when I said, you know, about the flies, I didn't mean to make it sound like the heat horn flies went through the system. They, they can, but I mean, they, anything can get absorbed, but uh, you know, they're using their manure piles to, <laughs> to lay their eggs and then poof, right. come out. So, but there are different flies that have different vectors. Some of them like bots, you know, they go through the system, create worms. Uh, especially in horses. So they're not a lot different than that in cattle. And then, so that's all the, the, 
really the livestock piece when it comes to trying to to time the market <laughs> uh what's kind of the prep work behind that we got about less than five just under five minutes How, what's the prep work behind trying to hit the market at the right time <laughs> you know there 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 is a lot to that i mean in in, in is going to depend on your feed do you have feed to carry something yeah. and i know some guys that they've got some feed they've got some you know kind of a quasi you know it's not a feed lot but per se but they're keeping these calves a little longer they're feeding them through december uh november december and trying to unload them sometime in january after the large uh market has bulged you know with a lot of people taking their animals to town and the price gets depressed because you know it's supply and demand and so they'll try to hold those cattle a little bit, maybe get rid of them in, in December, January, certainly. And, um, you know, they're trying to make a little bit more money. If you, for every three cents a pound, you make difference. You know, that's a, that's a good thing. That's important. Sometimes, like in our case, you know, we, we're strictly grazing at this point. Uh, you know, we kind of got to do that when the market is right or a buyer wants them at a certain time because they have obligations to, uh, somebody that they've sold to. So uh, a lot of that time is with a, with a, a broker or a buyer that you're dealing with directly. It's, it's their time frame. But you know up front when, you've, when you have contracted those calves in, say, February or March before they're ever born, this right. is what you're going to get per pound. This is what you expect to get. But when you take them to the market on your own, yeah, you got a little bit more control, but you may not get quite the price either. It's, it's, it's going to be market driven and it's going to be market driven based on, unfortunately, the futures market too, which is months down the road. So it's, it's a crapshoot. That's, that's, you, you do not have your fate in your own hands uh, in that, in that manner. Uh, and really with any of it, you know, you're trying to do the best you can. All right. With that, it's how to produce a calf, <laughs> the prep work that goes into getting a calf for fall sale. And then some of the the research, timing, and a little bit of luck that goes with that particular sale. Yeah.